Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. If you haven't, welcome to you too. This is just a little video I thought I'd throw together about the Maxi Track 300 liter or 10.6 CFM portable 12 volt air compressor. Very high output, higher than pretty much anything else. Um, easily within anywhere near the price range. Um, might not be able to get them hardly at all anymore. I've heard that they're pretty much sold out everywhere, but sold at Napa. Otherwise they are sold in Australia and other places. But there's similar models, so this will be pretty close. So just to uh, show you a little bit, um, in case you don't know about air compressors and how they're rated. They're rated in CFM, which is cubic feet per minute. And it's also liters for you metric folks. And this is primarily for the US, so I'll do it in uh, Imperial. So at zero, most of these are gonna be rated at zero PSI or uh, however you want to call it um, it's not always easy to find the actual specs on some of these so you just kind of kind of dig around a little bit and uh, but anyway this one is 10.6 CFM and that's going to be at free air or zero so it, CFM is basically a or which is the output is going to be um, kind of a curved um, amount and it's going to be different for every compressor and you're going to be able to usually find normal shop type compressors rated at 40 psi and 90 because those are the two common pressures that people are going to run them at so that's really where you want to compare um, if you don't have these numbers it's really hard to compare the output so you really got to go by the specs but you can see at zero, it's going to be about 10.6, which is pretty high, higher than virtually any of the others that I have found, um, especially of this style of 12 volt portable. Um, and then about 29 PSI, it's down to 6.5. And then I couldn't find any specs any higher, so I just kind of roughly estimated this is not to scale, so don't. Don't critique me on it, but uh, I just wanted to give you a rough idea of how the output works. So the higher the pressure goes, the lower the output goes. Obviously, you want more pressure at a higher output because normal shop compressors and tools are going to be at 90 to 100 PSI, and that's where you're going to want to run stuff. So if your output is way down at that pressure, you know, your actual refill time is going to be lower. So with that said, uh, I'll get started a little bit and uh, get some stuff set up and show you what this one can do. And I'll be back in a minute. Now, before I uh, cut to the actual working part of the video, now remember, this is testing air compressors. I got the engine running. It's gonna be loud. Turn your volume down. Just for you uh, headphone guys or, you know, if you got a nice big powerful speaker, you're gonna to wanna to turn it down. It's gonna be kinda of loud. I'll try to talk through a little bit, but otherwise I'll stay pretty silent because it'll be pretty hard to hear, so. Okay, this first test is going to be filling a four gallon tank. Four gallon is a, a fairly decent common size uh, used for off-road tanks. So I got this one that's uh, four gallon, so we'll just try that. And I'll show you the gauge as it's uh, getting started. Okay. So you 
see the gauge is at zero. And we'll just turn it on. that's where the uh, pressure switch will cut it off and that switch does not come installed in there it's actually mounted inside here a lot of them put it on the back with fittings but I wanted it a little cleaner a little more protected for the wiring so I put it in here I may do a separate video on that not sure but so that'll be the first part Okay, for this next part, I'll just fill the tire up. You can see it's flat. Now, right now, this 50 foot hose, 3 8 di diameter inside, is connected to the compressor. It's up to 120 for the little bit of, that's in here. So we'll just see roughly how long it takes to fill this tire, which is a uh, 285-7017. I believe it's a 32 inch. Which would be a fairly normal uh, highway 
pressure for most tires. So that's not too bad. So we'll uh, move on then. Okay, so let's say you're uh, using a two gallon tank and you want to see how long it will take to pump it up from empty to about 120. Let's move you a little closer. a little just a little past the, the beginning of the red As you can see, that's uh, about 38 seconds. That's not bad. That's a lot of pressure, a lot of volume in a small compact package. So, you're out on the trail, you wanna fill up your tires after airing down. Okay, but what if you break down and you wanna use some tools? Can it use an impact. I'm going to show you a can. So, then what we'll do is uh, we'll test like, uh, we'll say 90 to 120 fill up. If I can get rid of the glare and still get rid of some pressure and 90 is somewhere about there so I'll try to uh, start the timer so what 12 13 seconds, that's not bad at all. That's a lot of output. I can still hold my hand on there. It's warm. It actually feels good right now. It's a little cool out here. I'd say that's probably just over 100 degrees. Now, just in case you want uh, more info on the 
the tank setup I have here. I do have another video on it. That shows uh, kind of what I did, how I modified it. It's actually from a real cheap, little, really slow air compressor. It has like 0.6 CFM at 90. So it's really slow. Just put some fittings, took the, everything off. Drilled it out a little bit, plugged the extra holes. So, if you're thinking about the Maxi Track or the uh, something like a King Thumper MK2 or something like that, sold in uh, in Europe, I think, and uh, Australia. Um, there's about ten other brands. I'll list them down in the description. Uh, just some others you can look for there's only this one and I believe one other brand that's this size and output sold in the US so overall it's uh, a really high output unit pair it with a even a small tank and you can do a lot um, run air tools air up tires pretty quick if you want to air up tires faster, you can use one of those uh, kits with the hoses that go to each, make your own or whatever. Um, so, hope that uh, gives you some idea and uh, gives you some info. If there's anything else you want to know, any questions you got, feel free to throw some comments down there. And uh, I hope it gave you more info, either positive or negative if this will work for you um, it does draw a lot of power which is okay in most cases as long as you have your motor running so your alternator is charging the battery it does draw I seen at the most I think right at start something like 85 amps and then it seems like it drops down a little bit as the pressure goes up to whatever that was like 65 70 something like that so it's a lot of a lot of amperage if you're going to be remote mounting it you're going to want at least zero gauge if you're putting it like in the back of your truck or something assuming your battery is in the front that's a long run you need to keep your voltage and amperage up running that far so uh, if you're mounting it right near the battery uh, you're probably okay with like a four gauge you're fine um, I also put a uh, Anderson type plug on there. I'm gonna be sort of permanently, temporarily mounting it in, in my vehicle. So I want that so I can easily just pop it out. So I'm gonna get on out of here. So hopefully you learned something and uh, we'll catch you next time.